I feel like I am one of the biggest failures in the world because I am unable to make a successful startup. On social media, you see so many of these young heads, like 18, 19, high schoolers, 19 year olds, 20 year old kids that are be able to build like $30 million, $50 million businesses. And I'm out here like, bro, I'm what I'm in my late twenties. I've been building apps for the past four years and I still stuck working a full time job. My apps, they make a little bit of money. I built like 14 different apps over the past four years. Most of them failed. Most of them don't make any money, but I have a couple apps that make like one or two thousand bucks a month but i'm just like bro what am i what am i doing wrong i'm about to jump off my balcony right now because like i'm a failure my apps suck i'm a shitty entrepreneur it is a skill issue i'm just a bad bad entrepreneur and it just gets worse and worse when i see all of these young heads on social media the high schoolers the kids in their early 20s building crazy businesses and also seeing some of my friends as well like really really good friends of mine we started building apps and companies at the same time but they're doing much better than me like they are much more successful than i am now don't get me wrong for all my friends if you are one of my friends that have built apps and startups that are watching this i'm genuinely happy for you like truly like i love seeing my friends crush it but on the flip side at the same time internally i look at myself and i'm like bro what's wrong with me? why can't I do that too? We're not that different. We're pretty similar. Like they're not that much smarter than me. They're not that much better coders than me, but here I am. I'm stuck. Like I cannot figure out how to get an app to really grow into a proper business that I can live off full time. And I'm still stuck at the full time job because of it. Also, I'm just being a little dramatic in this video. Like, yes, am I actually depressed about this? No, I'm a pretty happy dude. Like life is good. I cannot complain about life, but I'm not going to lie. There are times where I have these manic episodes, depressive episodes where I just straight up crash out. I am like, I'm on the floor in the fetal position being like what is the point of all this why am i doing this this is so not worth it i'm ass i'm booty i'm a garbage ass booty ass entrepreneur holy hell i should just quit i suck at this yo chat just on the topic of crashing out and going crazy i want to tell you a funny story at work the other day that made me crash out like crazy but i just want to tell a funny story the other day of how i was tagged in the pr to review some code and you know i thought my morning was going to be all chill and everything next thing i know i'm tagged in a pr that had over a thousand line code change are you dead ass with me right now? Do you know how quickly my day was ruined when I realized I had to review this 1000 line code change before I can even get started on my own work? It was instantly ruined. I'm not proud of this one, but I just took one look at it. And I was like, yeah, I'm not gonna review this. I just hit LGTM, send it, ship it. Let's see what happens in prod. Because honestly, I would rather deal with a potential bug that it would cause in prod than waste like 30 minutes reviewing this 1000 line code change. But that exact scenario is what made me wish I had a tool like Corbett, an AI powered code reviewing tool, which is also the sponsor of today's video. Now, not just, I know, I know you're gonna be like, oh my God, another AI tool. Are you dead ass with me right now? But hey, pause, pause, look, look, hear me out. All the other AI tools out on the market just automate the part of coding that's actually fun, the writing part. But Corbett's the one tool out there that automates the one part that everybody kind of universally hates, the reviewing part. With a few clicks, it connects to GitHub, Bitbucket, GitLab, and it automatically gets to work and starts reviewing every single code change that starts coming in. It's like that rare 10X staff engineer you always tag to review your code who actually cares about the code that's written rather than the person that's been working at a fame company for the past 20 years and is completely coasting and does not care about code quality at all. Yeah, you know exactly what I'm you know exactly who I'm talking about, don't lie. It improves the code review process by making up from the real human fatigue that builds up from engineers that get tagged in 50 code reviews every single day. Take some weight off of your shoulders as a code reviewer and also get some really quick feedback on the code that you're writing yourself by having Corbett be a part of your code review process. Start your free trial for Corbett. It integrates into your GitHub, Bitbucket, and GitLab. No credit card or setup required. And I'm sure if you're watching this video, I'm not the only person that has ever crashed out like this. You've probably crashed out like this on a daily basis where you feel like a miserable failure too. It's normal. It's a part of the process. At least I think so. But let me tell you how I rationalize all of this potential quote unquote failures, which I don't really consider failures, but this is how I rationalize this feeling of failure that I have deep down inside. Of me. So what I realize is this number one is all of those young kids out there. They are all just like outliers. They're not the norm. Like most high schoolers, most kids in their early twenties are not building multi-million dollar app businesses. Social media just celebrates the young successes, the outliers out there and does not look at like the 99% of the other failures out there in the world or not even failures it's just people who haven't built multi-million dollar businesses by the time they're like 19. the second thing i want you to think about is the fact that at least from my very small anecdotal evidence a lot of these like really successful young entrepreneurs a lot of them they started their hustle like they started hustling with their first business in like middle school with like i don't know a roblox server a minecraft server you know car washes all that like kind of like sweaty startup stuff and there's a really popular saying out there for entrepreneurship saying every overnight success is seven or ten years in the making for these kids, when they start their first business in high school, they already got seven, eight, nine, ten 10 years.
years under their belt by the time they create their breakout app and make multi-million dollar businesses. And I'm gonna be honest, for myself, I didn't stumble upon this entrepreneurship stuff until post-college, like a year or two out of college. So I'm still way, way early on in the stages of my entrepreneurship journey. Like all the way throughout college, I was just an NPC, bro. I was just trying to get into a good college and get a good job post-grad, which I did. But then afterwards, I was just like, what's the point of all this? Working in a corporate job is, this is the rest of my life? Oh my, bro, I can't do this. So really, because I only started my actual, my real entrepreneurship journey a year or two after college, I'm only a couple years in in my journey. My 10 year overnight success, I'm only in the first four years, man. You gotta pay off your ignorance debt. There's actually a banger quote by Alex Hormozzi. I actually don't watch his content, but my friend told me this, but there's a banger quote by Alex Hormozzi saying in the beginning stages of entrepreneurship, you are paying off your ignorance debt. Like you are paying your dues. You gotta earn your stripes right now. And that's what I'm doing right now during this process where it just feels like I'm flailing and I'm failing and I'm sinking. But in reality, if I look at it objectively, year over year, it's gotten better. And I've gotten better as an entrepreneur. Like I mentioned before, over the past four years, I've built probably like 14 different apps. From years one and two, I made apps with zero users and zero dollars of revenue. Year three, I made my first app that made 300 bucks a month. And then year four, I made like two or three different apps that made over a thousand dollars a month at their peak. And finally, right now, like year, I don't know, year four and a half, year five, I finally have an app that crossed the $2,000 a month of revenue mark. So even though it feels like I'm failing and I'm just like a garbage ass entrepreneur, if you look at it objectively from a metrics perspective, I'm getting better. Entrepreneurship is a game of luck, but it's also a game of skill. And the skill portion of me is getting better and better because I just stayed in the game. So I really do believe that time in the game is what is important. As long as you stay in the game, you will get your flowers. You will get your big dub eventually. It's all just about staying in the game and honing your craft day in and day out. And I think a really great story of this is I don't want to dox this person, but I have a friend whose uncle is a billionaire. Literally, I'm not making this story up. I know this person individually up to you, whether you want to believe me, but I'm being dead ass on God for real right now. I have a friend whose uncle is like a multi-billionaire somewhere in Asia. And this uncle was in the trenches. He started his first business when he was in his early 20s, never went to college, just created some type of shop. And then essentially like throughout his whole lifetime for 20 years in a row, up until the age of his mid forties, he would just start like seven businesses every single year. Like half of them would do well, half of them would not do that well. So every year they would just go net zero. He wouldn't make any big breakout success. But over 20 years, he just kept being in the game, trying out a bunch of different businesses. And now and he's in his mid forties and he just hit a crazy home run. Like he's a multi hundred millionaire at this point. It's insane, okay? So I think a lot about that story. This bro was in the trenches grinding for 20, 25 years. Why am I complaining just three, four years in, in my entrepreneurship journey being like, oh, but I'm a failure. I'm not a millionaire yet. I'm still working my full time job. Bro, life is long. You gotta figure that out. You gotta be in the game for a long time. And I think a lot about my friends who are in fields like medicine, where they are doing training for seven, eight, nine, 10 years before they can even get their first job as a doctor. Once again, I'm out here complaining over four years of no success. Bro, come on, be for real. Be for real with me, right? Like entrepreneurship is not easy. Yes, there are gonna be outlier cases of people that break out really early on their first try or their second try. Your boy's out here on his 14th or 15th fucking try, four and a half, almost five years in on this shit, I'm still in the game. And I think really, once again, time in the game is all that matters. So remember, you're not too early, you're not too late, you're on your own schedule, you're gonna be on time. So I do think also that a lot of people go into entrepreneurship thinking that they wanna be an entrepreneur, be a startup founder, but then a lot of times you get a taste of it and you're like, oh, this is kinda ass, man, I'm just gonna become a corporate worker for the rest of my life. That's not a bad thing. Like that's totally fine. Like you kind of have to be a little cuckoo messed up in the head to be a startup founder and entrepreneur because this shit is hard. It makes you feel horrible 99% of the time, but you still want to do it. I think I've realized over the past four and a half, five years of doing this, that I'm about that life. Like I'm actually about that life, even though it makes me feel horrible most of the time. You will find out whether or not you are truly about that life if you go out and try to do this entrepreneurship, the startup shit on your own. So that is a quick crash out of me ranting about how I feel like a failure, but it's actually not that bad. We'll figure it out. Out. I have nothing else to say. See ya.